as some of you may know, I have attempted a few Pokemon Nuzlocke before on this channel with varying success. What you may also realize is the fact that all my Platinum runs have been a failure, losing both my Wedlock and my Renegade Platinum Nuzlocke runs really early into the game. I was getting bored of Nuzlocke's, and seeing Small Ant 1's video doing this challenge in Emerald, I felt inspired to do the same, and to do it with a game that I haven't had the best time doing challenges with. I will be following the same rules and guidelines as Small Ant. The only rule is that no matter what, I am not allowed to enter a Pokemon Center or use a PC. If I black out, I have to go back to my last save file, as I will be teleported to a Pokemon Center otherwise. Like Small Ant, I will also be avoiding beds and PCs outside of centers, such as the Rest Bed in Galactic HQ and the Lady before entering Eterna Forest or Snow Point City. If possible, I would like to beat this challenge without having to use the move struggle. Without further ado, let's begin the game. I decided to play as a girl and name myself legs in my rival arms. I kept resetting the game until I got a nature that I was satisfied with. Since Chinchar was going to be used for the whole game, I would like to make the most use out of it in its nature. After 5 minutes of resets, which was a surprisingly short amount of time, I got a Chinchar with a naughty nature, which increases its attack stat and decreases special defense. I was now ready to begin the challenge. I named the Chimchar Sinnoh and I quickly made my way to Jubilife City. I avoided every wild battle I could, as I would begin little amounts of experience and wasting PP. Instead, I fought every trainer I could before the second rival battle with arms. I barely managed to get to level 11, and I won't lie, I was really worried. The battle started, I used an X attack, which I found in the Pokemon school, however, it wasn't really much of a use since Starly would keep growling at me. Eventually, Starly gets defeated and Piplup gets sent out. And I got really lucky here, but Piplup did not use Bubble whatsoever, and after a bit of struggling, I was able to beat arms. Before entering Orberg City, Chimchar evolved into a Monferno and learned a Mach Punch, which I replaced with Scratch. Thankfully, I won't have to teach my starter Rock Smash, which is a huge relief. I quickly made my way to the mine and fought the Gym Leader. In front of the mine, there was a Dire Hit, an item which increases the chance of a critical hit happening inside of a battle. I used item against Rourke. My level 16 Monferno quickly made work of his level 12 Geodude and level 12 Onyx. His level 14 Kranidos was nearly one in KO'd with Mach Punch as well, but survived barely. He couldn't do anything though as when he healed, I was able just to knock him out. Shortly after defeating the first gym, I decided to catch a Badoop and name him the Kalos. Kalos will be used as a HM slave. I taught at Rock Smash, and I made my way to Flarma Town in Violet Windworks to fight Team Galactic. Galactic Commander Mars wasn't too much of an issue. Thankfully, Sinnoh learned Flame Wheel between the Ouroburg City Gym and this battle, and I was able just to KO Zubat, and then quickly finish off Heroically with Mach Punch. At this point, I was low on power points. However, I was really close to Eterna Forest, where I would meet Cheryl. After every battle in the forest, she would fully heal your Pokemon, including their power points. So I used this opportunity to fight every trainer on the route before the forest and every trainer inside of the forest itself. After the forest, I quickly went to challenge the gym, quickly making work of it, and then I went to Galactic HQ to challenge Jupiter. The battle with Jupiter wasn't too difficult, however I was being really reckless and I nearly fainted, along with using all my power points. I then went to collect the bike, got the egg, explore kit, and the experience share. I can't remove the egg from my party as I'm not allowed to use the PC, which means that I'm going to have to hash this egg and use it. This is where the challenge finally started to get difficult, as I was really low on power points. I tried to avoid as many trainers while making my way to Heart Home, however I wasn't really good at it. I got into many battles. There was this one battle with a high current as Geodude. This Geodude survived Sinnoh's Mach Punch with, with barely any health left, and decided to use self-destruct. Sinnoh survived barely with about 5 HP. This run would have died since I didn't have any revives, but thankfully Sinnoh managed to pull through. Before entering Heart Home, I spoke to the Berry Master and he gave me a berry. I was too silly to not say before asking him, as he gives random berries each time. I could have stopped reset the game many times until I got a leopard berry. Thankfully, on that same route, there was an Aether behind some smashable rocks. I quickly went to Fanta's... I wrote down Fanta instead of Fantina. I quickly went to Fantina's gym. Sinnoh is level 31 and close to leveling up, so I decided to fight a trainer in the gym. He nearly defeated Sinnoh, and that was when I realized how difficult this gym battle may be. Here is my reaction to the battle with the trainer. I just did that battle so I can get to level 32. What? Okay, well, I'm really scared of this gym now. I wasn't too worried about it, but now it's a bit it's a bit different now. Oh my goodness. I'm also low on PP. I don't know if I want to heal. I quickly healed Sinnoh using potions and went to challenge Fantina. Her first two Pokemon weren't an issue. However, Miss Magius was the reason I was worried about this battle as she has Psybeam. Psybeam hits me and I am brought down to exactly half health, but not only that, it also confused Sinnoh. I knew I was faster, so I decided to risk it and I attacked, and as a result I won the battle. Shortly after, I meet Arms yet again and then we had a rival battle. He leads me Starvavia with Intimidate, and my first attempt doesn't go too well with his Primple of fainting Sinnoh. On the second try, I lead with Kalos, so he gets hit with Intimidate, then switches Sinnoh and faint Starvavia. He then switches to Primple up again. 
I hit it with Mach Punch and put it down to red health, which activates its Torrent ability and will hit KO Sinnoh. I was able to revive him, and he was eventually able to take out Primpup, and then I easily swept his point in Rosalia. I made it past Salation on town, and made my way to Route 215. I was really worried about this route since it's raining, meaning that Sinnoh will do less damage. Thankfully there was also an Aether which became really useful in this route. I avoided every single trainer I could, and I got the fist plate as well. The final battles in this route were very difficult as I had to deal with Drift, Wimp, Weasel, and Gligar. This was the scariest battle I had during this run so far. Thankfully, after this battle, Sinnoh evolved into Infernape, which is really rewarding. Although close combat only has 5 power points, I decided to teach it over Ember anyway due to its high damage. I decided to give the experience share to Kalos as well and went to challenge a gym. This gym wasn't too bad, and after the battle, Kalos evolved into a Bibriel. I get fly from the Team Galactic battle and made my way to Pastoria City to challenge Lake. I explored a route to the left of Pastoria City before fighting my rival, able to beat my rival without much issue. For some reason, I reset the game midway through the gym, and I realized that my last save point didn't fight the rival. I decided to plant a berry and wait for it to grow tomorrow and start fresh the next day. I forgot to mention, my Togepi hatched sometime after Volastone Gym. I named him Johto and I gave him a Soothe Bell. Between all the trick-or-treating today, I was thinking of a plant to hatch which would allow me to beat Wake. I went to the Blue Shard Man to see if I could learn Thunder Punch, however I lacked the blue shards. I went exploring underground with the exploring kit but got fed up really quickly and moved on. I decided to go back to Orberg to visit the bottom of Orberg Lake. I got Brick Break. I then went to Wayward Cave and got Double Team. I made my way back to the gym, refought the rival and all the gym trainers. Infernape learns Close Combat at level 41, which I already had. I decided to replace Close Combat with Brick Break, and then when Sinnoh leveled up to 41, I replaced Mock Punch, which has 0 PP, with Close Combat. The battle with Wake took a few tries. I first tried teaching Kalos Shockwave to deal with Gyarados, but I soon realized that it was silly, since Kalos is such a low level. I was planning on learning Double Team later, but I felt like I had no other choice. I decided to replace Taunt with Double Team. After a few attempts and lucky misses from Gyarados, I was able to set up using 5 Double Teams and a few battle items. Unluckily though, Gyarados kept hitting Sinnoh every second turn, putting him under half health and requiring me to heal multiple times. After setting up, I finally began to use close combat, one hit KOing all of Wake's Pokemon. I went back to the Lepa bush that I planted yesterday, and I got 5 Lepa berries surprisingly enough. I was expecting to get something like 2. I decided to plant 2 more and I went back to the Pastoria City to chase the Galactic Grunt. I realized that Togepi won't evolve anytime soon, so I have no choice but to either catch a flying type Pokemon so I can give it Defog, or go in with the Fog without Defog. I decided to go without the TM for now, but I don't know if it's a good idea. I only have 6 member slots and Togepi will eventually be able to learn Fly anyway, but then again, this is also the only time in the game where Defog is actually used. During the first trainer battle, I missed 3 moves. I really need Defog, but then I had a great idea. Instead of getting Defog, I decided to go back to Veilstone City I bought a lot of X accuracy so I won't miss any moves. Surprisingly enough, the X accuracy tactic worked and I barely missed any moves. What's even better, on the very last battle of the route, Against the Elder before entering Celestic Town, Togepi evolved into Togepi at level 20. Cyrus wasn't too difficult, I then got TM Surf. With that, I made my way to Canlay City and fought the rival battle. I first led with Kalos Bibriel, so he would get intimidated by Staraptor. I then switched to Infernape and started to double team. But since Staraptor had Aerial Ace, it didn't really help much. He also started double teaming. I got really lucky and I hit both of my Flame Wheels. Empoleon misses Bubble Beam, and I used my last close combat, one hit KOing. Heracross wasn't an issue. Or so I thought. It survived a flame wheel with barely any HP left and had an aerial ace, bringing me under half health. Since I knew Sinnoh was going to hit first, Heracross was taken out. Rapidash and Rosary go down shortly after. I went to the gym and tried to challenge the gym leader a few times. I only had 4 attack moves left, so I had to set up with double team my next attacks. On my first attempt, it went really well, however, I had to struggle at the end. Like I mentioned before, I wanted to do this run without using struggle at all, so I decided to reset the game. I used the same strategy as before in my second attempt, except for the fact that I used 2 X attacks instead of 1. After a few tries, I finally managed to beat Byron and got the 6 gym badge without having to use struggle. Siren wasn't an issue, and neither was Mars. After stocking up, I started to make my way through Mount Cornet and to Snowpoint City. Before challenging to the gym in Snowpoint, I decided to look for extra efforts and other items. After a bit of idle time, I decided to go to South of San Gem Town, teaching Togetic Shockwave. For people wondering, I saved before teaching it to Kalos, later reloading a save without him knowing Shockwave. While exploring Route 212, I was doing a bit of research myself, and I found out that Golda can learn Rock Climb, Waterfall, Strength, Rock Smash, and Smurf. 
I need gold like as Bibriel does not have rock climb and waterfall. And I don't want to teach you no rock climb. In like Verity, you can easily find a gold duck in the water. I eventually found our level 32 gold duck. I caught it and named it Unova. I then removed Kalos' movesets and I gave him and Unova HM based movesets. Kalos got cut, rock climb, and rock smash, and Unova got surf and strength. I'm not going to lie, I made a mistake. Before fighting a Snowpoint City gym, I decided to go to Amity Square so I can get the amulet coin along with the TMs inside of there. When I went outside, I realized that going into the Amity Square fully heals all of your Pokemon, including their power points. I didn't go inside of a Pokemon Center, however I feel like it still defeats the purpose of the challenge. Well, since Sinnoh was the only Pokemon that was actually missing power points out of the entire party, I decided to throw away my only Max Elixir as a compensation. This gym yet again was really simple. All I had to do was use an X attack and I ended up just using Flame Wheel and sweeping the entire gym. Before going to the Lake and to the main Galactic HQ, I went back to Route 212 to get the Shiny Stone, fully evolving Johto. I made my way through Villa Stone Galactic HQ without much issue, eventually starting the first battle with Cyrus. It wasn't too difficult, but as I was setting up X attacks, the Sneasel kept screeching, and I nearly got KO'd by a critical air cutter from his Crobat. Siren was beaten really easily as well. I then made my way to Mount Coronet and to the summit. Before reaching the summit, I replaced Flame with Flamethrower, which I got from Fuego Ironworks. Me and Arms ended up fighting against Galactic Commander Jupiter and Mars. After the battle, Arms fully healed my Pokemon, including their power points, and I went inside of Distortion World. And the battle with Cyrus begins. I lead with Sinnoh and try to double team 6 times since he leads with a Houndoom. I use 2 X attacks, a dire hit, and then healed. I big break Houndoom, finishing him in one hit. Cyrus then switches to Gyarados, which intimidates me. I use another X attack. He thankfully misses his waterfall, and I go for another big break. It wasn't very effective, as I only brought him down to half health. I felt like I had no other choice but to close combat, as I wasn't sure if another big break would KO. His Crobat got sent out. I began to stock up on X special. His Crobat hit me with an air slash. I began to panic. I sent out Johto and put Crobat to sleep. I used his time to use another X special on Sinnoh. Crobat was faster than Sinnoh, and he ended up toxicking and confused ring Sinnoh. Sinnoh thankfully avoided hitting himself and he was able to hit Flamethrower, KOing Crobat. Honchkrow was the Pokemon I was most worried about. However, I was able to one hit KO him with a close combat. We evolved with Cyrus' last and a Brick Break easily finished him off. I have beaten the battle I was most scared of in this game, and in my first try as well. I then used the Master Ball to catch Garantina. Volkner started with a Jolteon. I used his time to set up with an X attack as he Thunder Waves me. I get paralyzed on my first turn and he starts to increase his special attack which charged me. On the second turn I am able to finish Jolteon in one hit. Volkner switches into his Raichu, who was able to hit me with a Focus Blast and put me down to red health, but I was able to still KO. I was one of my full restores while he sends out Electrovire. I use Close Combat and then Brick Break for Luxray. I defeated Volkner. I made it through the Victory Road without too much trouble. Before fighting arms for the last time, I restocked on items in the Pokemon League. Now, as you may know, the Elite Four hub area has Pokemon Center music. However, I will not step on the left side of the building, as that counts as a Pokemon Center. I leave with Kalos as Staraptor will intimidate. I then switch out to Sinnoh. I went for a Flamethrower without setting up, and one hit KO Staraptor. Empoleon was sent out next, which Sinnoh then used Brick Break, leaving Empoleon with red health. He knocks out Sinnoh. I sent out Johto, and Johto finishes off Empoleon with Grass Knot. Arm sends out a Heracross, which Hoenn takes out. Rosary is next, and I allow Hoenn to get KO'd so I can fully heal Sinnoh. Sinnoh had the chance to learn Flare Blitz, however I decided to not teach it. Snorlax was out next, and was 2 hit KO'd by Sinnoh. Rapidash was his last Pokemon, and I decided to toy with him a bit, resulting in three of my Pokemon fainting. For Elite 4 leader Aaron, I led with Sinnoh and used an X special, as Yanmega used double team. I was able to 1 hit KO Yanmega, but Drapion was next. I didn't teach Dig or Earthquake at this point, so I was in a fix. I used a Flamethrower and hoped for the best. I brought up the healing range, however the Citrus Berry saved me. Drapion went down without much trouble. Heracross went out with one flamethrower, no Vespacoon and Scizor. The first fight went easily. I healed up and went to the next room. Bertha leads with a Wish Cash. I switched to Johto and to use Grass Knot, taking it down in two hits. I decided to stay in as Grass Knot does more damage to heavier Pokemon, and Rock Slash ground types are usually really heavy. Golem was the next Pokemon to be sent out, and Johto made light work of it, went to KOing, and did the same with Rhyperior. Whiskrow was a Pokemon I was not ready for. Unova is really low leveled, but I tried to use Ice Beam from him anyway. Unsurprisingly though, Unova goes down in one hit. This Gliscor does a lot of damage to Hoenn, with him doing very little. Gliscor used Ice Fang and froze me too. I was barely not able to feign Gliscor, 
and Barifa healed it. Thanks to a lucky crit, I was able to take it down. For Hippopowdon, I switched back to Jodo and used Grass Knot, ending the battle. Before fighting Flint, I decided to give Earthquake to Hoenn as a backup. As Flint leads with a Houndoom, I used this as an opportunity to set up with X attacks. After 3 X attacks in the heal, I was ready to sweep Houndoom, Infernape, Rapidash, Flareon, and Magamotar went down with one hit. When fighting Elite for Lucian, I forgot to heal Flamethrower before this fight, so I had to replenish during the fight. Mr. Mime set up a reflection. Thankfully, I am not going to be using physical moves with special moves. My Flamethrower did half damage, as he sets up another barrier. I then used this time to set up double teams. One Psychic almost 100 KO'd Sinnoh, and lowered special defense. Sinnoh eventually faints, and I use Hoenn to take out Mr. Mime. I stayed with him until he fainted against an Espeon. Jodo's Shadow Ball was my hope. I put Espeon to sleep to, and used his time to faint it. Galeta was sent out next. I couldn't yawn it as it was faster and he stone aged Jodo down. He stone aged Halloween also. I revived Jodo and fully heal him. He survived a stone age from full health. Edge only has 5 power points, meaning that he has 2 left. He uses them both as I spam heal with Garatina out again. After all this spam healing, I'm surprised that Halloween of all Pokemon took out Galeta with a Shadow Force. Bronzong was the next Pokemon. And knowing that Sinnoh will be faster, I sent him out and used Flamethrower. He survived with very little health and got healed. However, I was still able to take him out with a Brick Break and another Flamethrower. The last Pokemon was an Alakazam, and I used Johto to take it out using a Yawn and my last Shadow Balls. It was only me and Cynthia left. Throughout the game, I've been collecting many rare candies, but I haven't used them up until this point. Before facing Cynthia, I used two of my Max Elixirs for Johto and Sinnoh, and used all my rare candies on Sinnoh going from level 59 to 69. As usual, I live with Sinnoh against their Spiritomb. I used this chance to double team 6 times. Spiritomb had Psychic, so I had to hope that it wouldn't drop my defense. I was able to get to double teams, and decided to use 3x attacks and 2x specials. Shadow Ball dropped my defense twice, so I was beginning to worry. I felt like I had no choice and decided to attack Spiritomb with a Flamethrower while in KOing. My Lodic was up next, and I decided to use Close Combat to guarantee taking it out, although my already fragile defense drops yet again. Pokekits was out next, I used Flamethrower, with it barely surviving. It used Air Slash, but thankfully missed. Togekiss was healed, however it was futile. Garchomp was finally sent out. I decided to bet on my high speed and went for a close combat again. Thankfully I was faster and one hit KO Garchomp. Rosade and Lucario were the last two Pokemon, and they both went down with a single Flamethrower. Snow leveled up to level 70 and the battle was over. I have become the champion. Therefore, I have proven that it is, in fact, possible to beat Pokemon Platinum without entering a Pokemon Center. I did not even need a full party of 6 Pokemon like I expected to. I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video, since it was my first time doing this. I will be doing more of these, hopefully, as well. So even though this one wasn't as good, it will become much, much better in the future. I also started streaming on Twitch again, so if you guys would like to hang out with me sometime, just follow me on twitch.tv forward slash raspberry. Thank you again for watching this video and make sure to have a good day.